With the upcoming iPad OS, can an iPad now replace a laptop? Let's talk about how this update is making that look more like a real possibility. Hello tech friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Craig. I love making tech videos on Apple products, smart devices, and other cool tech. If that sounds like something you're into, sit back and enjoy. Links to anything I talk about will be in the description. When the iPad first came out, it was basically a large iPhone that you couldn't make a call from. But it's become so much more useful as developers continue to create apps that take advantage of the size, touchscreen, and the power of the iPad. For many, the iPad has become the only device other than their phone that they use. I've been able to handle about 80% of what I need to do with just an iPad. I can edit videos using LumaFusion, edit photos with Affinity Photo, take care of emails, reply to comments, create documents, watch YouTube, and much more. But can an iPad really replace my laptop? Before I started using the beta of iPad OS, I would have said no. There were too many important things missing that held the iPad back. But the more I use the beta of iPad OS, I find that it's fixing a lot of those things. Now, using only an iPad is looking like a real possibility and something I want to explore. To the point, I'm going to challenge myself to use only the iPad Pro instead of my laptop for the next month. Let's talk about what I see as the positive of switching completely to an iPad, then let's look at some of the things that have been missing and how iPad OS helps fix those things. A big reason I want to move everything over to the iPad is to have the most portable and enjoyable form factor. iPads are fun to use and they're convenient. The iPad is lightweight, comfortable to hold, and can be used just about anywhere. It's perfect for enjoying videos, books, social media, games, and so much more. How nice would it be to be be able to do everything else you may need from a computer on the iPad. Personally, I see tablets and touchscreens as the future of computing instead of the traditional mouse and keyboard. I love using a device with an OS designed for touch and being able to incorporate the Apple Pencil into my workflow. I also love that when I use an iPad, almost everything I do is app based and not browser based. I like how apps are designed for a specific purpose. They feel so much quicker when doing a task that would normally be web browser based on a laptop. Using Face ID with apps instead of passwords and browsers is so much nicer in my opinion. But with all the good of the iPad, why have I not made the switch to using the iPad for everything. I think switching to an iPad for everything requires a new way of thinking and approach to things. It takes time to make the change. And with the things that have been missing, it has not been worth making that commitment. Even if you are open to the new approach, some things are just a pain to do on an iPad. There are workarounds and apps for almost everything, but a lot of them are more work with little benefit in my eyes. The new iPad OS removes a lot of that extra work and streamlines things getting done. It brings some of the missing computer functionality to the iPad. For example, I've been able to edit videos on my iPad, but it required me to upload my videos into the Photos app and then have my editing software access the videos in the Photo app. That adds an extra step. Another option would be to download those videos onto my computer, upload the videos to the cloud, and pull them from the cloud into my editing software. But that's so much slower and much more work than just downloading them on a hard drive through my computer and editing on my computer. Why slow down my video editing with all these extra steps just to edit on my iPad? There's been no real way to manage files outside of the cloud. You could not load files from an external drive directly to the iPad. When the iPads added USB-C, I think people were excited about it. Finally, we'll be able to hook up drives to our iPads. But that wasn't the case. But now, iPad OS finally solves this. Now you can connect USB drives. Like a computer, you can drag files between the iPad and external drives. There is finally a real system that allows you to easily move things between folders and drives. You even have a column view like in Mac OS, so it just feels very familiar. This is the computer piece that's been missing from the iPad. I think this is the game changer for getting things done with files. I can now import my videos right into my iPad files folder and not have to go through my photo app. 
The files can live on just my iPad and not be tied to any app or the cloud. I can put files on a drive to archive or share with someone and not have to depend on the cloud. Another big thing that's kept me from moving over to the iPad is the web browser. There are a lot of things that can still only be done through a web browser online. A mobile browser with a mobile site is not going to cut it for those things. For example, managing my YouTube channel with the YouTube Creator Studio site requires a real web browser. iPad OS brings a desktop browser to the iPad, complete with the download manager for downloading files. Now I can go to my music service, download a track into the downloads folder, and import it right into my editing software. I can open up Gmail, respond to emails, and download the attachments through Safari, and it will be saved in my files folder. I can do all the behind the scenes work for my videos on the YouTube Creators Studio page. These are all things that I would have normally used my laptop or iMac for. A desktop browser opens up so many possibilities. iPad OS brings new functionality to typing on the iPad. I do have the keyboard for the iPad Pro, but I don't always have it on. Some people don't want to use an external keyboard at all with their iPad. For me, the idea of responding to emails, typing notes for video and other tasks sounds horrible to, with the touchscreen keyboard. But iPad OS introduced a smaller keyboard called a quick type keyboard. Now I can have the keyboard case off and when I need to type something, I can bring up a small quick type keyboard. No more trying to stretch my thumbs across the screen to type as I would on my phone to respond to an iMessage or an email, or having to lay the iPad down flat to try to type on the screen like I would on my laptop. To zoom the keyboard down, you just do a two finger squeeze. You can also move the zoom keyboard anywhere you want on the screen. Another great iPad OS keyboard feature is quick path typing. You can swipe between letters to type. This speeds up typing with the Zoom keyboard even more. Quick path typing is something I'm getting used to, but it is really fast. I'm finding that it's pretty forgiving. It is also easy to delete a word. If you make a mistake, a backspace will delete the whole word that was just typed. I typed up my notes for this section using swipe typing. These keyboard changes make it so much easier to be watching a video, switch to a task that requires typing, quickly type what I need, and hop right back into my video. I used to pull out my phone because it was quicker and easier to type on instead of using the iPad or grabbing the laptop. Also, quick path typing is coming to iPhones with iOS 13 later this year. Another big part of getting work done at times is being able to have multiple windows open. The iPads have had multitasking and split screen, but iPad OS has taken that to the next level. Now you can have two windows of the same app open at the same time. I can have two Safari windows open next to each other if I want to look at two different things. I can have two notes open so I can move handwritten notes to a typed version. And I could have two of other supported apps open at the same time. This is great if you're trying to reference one window while working on another window of the same app. iPad OS also adds app switching to slide over to make it even more useful. With slide over, you can open up an app in a smaller window and slide it out of the way. You can now stack multiple apps in the slide over window and they all can be slid out of the way. You can bring them back with a slide out. Maybe you want a calendar, your email, your Twitter feed, or whatever else you want to quickly reference. Instead of having to open that app full screen or put it in one of your split screen windows, you can slide it out of the way and bring it back whenever you need. To look at the apps in the stack, you can swipe through the apps like you would on an iPhone 10 using the bar at the bottom of the window. If you want to close out one of the apps in the stack, you can swipe up on that bar and you'll see all of the apps lined up and just swipe away the ones you no longer want to use. I think this is a great addition that adds that extra layer and another tool to get stuff done. Another big change is the look of the home screen. It is not a giant iPhone with big gaps between the icons. You now have smaller icons, smaller gaps, and can put more apps on a screen. 
screen. You now can also leave your widgets on a screen. This can give you more access to useful tools and quick access to things you may use frequently. You could pin your two favorite widgets to the top of the screen. Maybe you want your most recent files easily accessible, or maybe you have shortcuts that you use a lot. There's so many possibilities now and widgets just make it that much more useful. iPad OS is also introducing some new gestures. There are new gestures for copy and pasting. You can select text and a three finger squeeze will copy the selection. You can then tap somewhere else and a three finger expand will paste it in that location. It takes a little getting used to the, some of these new gestures, but as you do get used to it, it becomes really easy to move along and navigate. You also can now take screenshots using the Apple Pencil. If you swipe from the bottom left corner of the screen with the Apple Pencil, it'll snap a screenshot. And from there, you could start editing and marking up that screenshot immediately with your pencil. You could then choose to save it to your photos or save it to your files folder. Really, this can be useful if you're grabbing information online a lot or you just want to grab a screenshot of something and send it off to someone. I am seeing so many cool features in iPad OS. I've just really scratched the surface. These are just some of the ones that I think are the most productive ones that really help give you more of that laptop feel. This is the first time I've downloaded beta software in years because this was so interesting to me. I really can't wait until iPad OS is out of beta and we see this fall what improvements are in the general release. I think iPad OS is going to make the iPad lineup feel fresh and new with so much more possibilities. I'm really excited for this one. I think this is what's been missing. Apple, good job. A lot of this stuff I wish we would add sooner, but I'm glad it's finally coming. I will follow up with my experience as I use the iPad as my only machine instead of my laptop. I'll also follow up with some of my favorite features that iPad OS is bringing to the table. What are your thoughts on using an iPad as a laptop replacement or alternative? What do you want to see come out in iPad OS? Let me know in the comments section. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button. To see more videos, subscribe and hit that bell to get notified. You could help support the channel, see additional content with that Patreon link over there. You could also find Amazon affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.